Welcome to part three of this crash course and we are discussing protocols and patient visits. So typically a clinical trial protocol is developed by the pharma sponsors and they're given to the site to implement. A protocol will have various different things. For example, you know, what is this drug of interest? What is the population of interest? How to screen, how to recruit, how to do the patient visits. And it's really important that you know you are very familiar with this protocol because any time that you are deviating from the protocol, it can automatically trigger something called a PD or a protocol deviation. Now we will discuss more about PD in a later part of this crash course. However, right now we really wanna focus on following the protocol and doing the patient visits. Typically, Patient visits are whenever patients come in and have an interaction with you. Now, this might be just you as a research person, or it can be you as well as the clinical staff, which can be the physician, the nurse, somebody administering the drug at the site. So each visit is really important to know exactly what's supposed to happen at the visit. It's important to coordinate the visit, to make sure where the patient is gonna come, which room they're gonna sit in, what is going to happen to them, giving them advance notice, making sure they're available, making sure they're able to come. Are they mobile? Are they immobile? Do they need PSW support? Do they need patient transport support, ambulation support, feeding support while they're here? So all of that are things that you have to think about as a clinical trial coordinator or a clinical trial assistant having done that you know once you visualize okay all elements of my visit are ready and you're gonna coordinate it and pull it through this is what typically happens there's a certain timeline of visits so typically once you've recruited and then you are starting your drug so that will be either your day zero or your day one now going forth the study might have up to day 100 200 300 whatever it can be done over three months six months one year two year some studies go into three years but typically the first couple of visits are more focused on actually giving the drug and monitoring the patient and then later on there is another kind of group of visits which are more focused on just continued following up and making sure they're doing okay they're doing okay no long-term side effects no recurrence of whatever disease they had but each visit has to be coordinated just as carefully by you now in order to plan a visit like i said you have to think about drug preparation pharmacy nursing support assessments um, you know logistics of the patient patient has to consent to come each time they can refuse just by you know not coming to one of the visits now typically if patients don't come to one or more of these visits they might be dropped for the study because they will just be like non-compliant patients who are not continuing to take the drug so they won't really adequately support the data analysis of the study which is trying to understand if this drug is working or not working So once you have coordinated your visits, it's really important to stay with the patient as each of the things are happening. And you might have a dual role to play in these visits. You might not just be the coordinator, you might also be performing some of the assessments. Now, not every clinical trial coordinator is a clinician, but if you are, if you happen to be a research nurse coordinator or a research nurse as well as a trial coordinator, you might be the one doing some of the drug admin, doing some of these advanced procedures. Even as research staff, there are some things you can do like more qualitative things as long as you are trained and certified to do them. For example, some questionnaires you can do with the patient, some questionnaires the patient might do themselves, some vital signs you might be trained to do. So make sure that you know you are aware of A, your skills and qualifications, but B, your site's ethics must also approve that a non-clinical person such as yourself or a clinical person with this kind of a nursing license or medical license is allowed to do XYZ because this doesn't only vary country by country it actually varies institution by institution of what your institution will allow to happen on that site especially if you are maybe an international medical graduate you might know a lot of advanced medical medical procedures and clinical procedures, but you might not have kind of the legal right to perform them at that institution or in that country. So it's very important that you're aware of what you can do. And some of the qualitative stuff, which most people can do, still needs some training. So you might need to have training done and documented. For example, the Columbia Suicide Scale is a very popular one. It's a certain standardized scale with a series of questions that you can ask the patient and you can just fill them in. And basically over time, you can see if the patient's um, suicidal tendencies are increasing or self-harm risk is increasing, depression scales. Um, however, even in order to administer them, some pharma sponsors and some institutions 
institutions might require you to do some additional training and document with your certificate that yes, you are able to administer this scale with the correct sensitivity, with the correct understanding and documentation techniques that is needed for that. So during the visit, you might be playing the role of both like coordinating all the logistics, but also doing some of these assessment. Sometimes you have to call in the phlebotomy to maybe come and collect blood work, somebody else to come and do the ECG, but you are the point of contact. You are the one who has to be responsible for everything getting done, everything getting adequately documented. This documentation is especially really important as things are happening live, whether you're doing it in the EMR system, you're taking your own notes, but having timestamp and saying this was done at this time by this person is super important. Why? We're going to discuss that a little bit more when we talk more about regulation and study monitor visits, but during a visit, just remember, the doing everything on time, following the protocol and documenting everything is extremely, extremely important. And once your visit has ended, your patient is now going to leave, making sure, you know, the handover, whether the patient is going back to another hospital, to a rehabilitation center, a retirement home, a long term care facility or their families taking them home. You, are, you until they leave your hands like they're still kind of your responsibility and in your custody so making sure that patient you know departure is healthy and safe and happy and making sure all of that is done once that is done your day is not done i actually have a full video about what happens during a patient visit in the lay in the life of a clinical trial coordinator that i'm going to link down below but essentially i want you guys to you know kind of visualize and understand during patient visits you're the one making the appointment booking everything coordinating it doing some of the assessments and interventions if you're qualified and accepted to do so as well as doing all of the data entry afterwards some of the times you know you might be the one kind of monitoring or oh, were there adverse effects if there was you have to make an adverse effect re report if there was an adverse effect go back and check your protocol and see okay whenever there is an adverse effect there are certain reporting protocols reporting systems i have to now initiate them i have to speak to the investigator who is a physician and say today the patient came they took the drug but they had this rash they were just telling me in passing they had this rash for the last three four days so definitely that is a potential adverse event reaction they could be having some kind of sensitivity to the drug over time so the physician really has to make the clinical decisions it, it could be very time sensitive by the time the patient goes home after your drug delivery if you don't report this on time they could have an anaphylactic shock on the way back so it's important to be able to recognize what is urgent what is not and to keep the physician the investigator informed of these things to do the reporting on time most serious adverse effect or AE adverse effect forms need to be submitted in like 24 hours. But even before you do the documentation and forms, it's important to make sure your own chain of command is kind of aware. The team is aware, your supervisor is aware of what is happening and they're deciding, okay, no, it's safe to let the patient go or no. The patient should stay overnight for observation. We should do this extra blood work on them. Look at the protocol. Maybe there is some extra anaphylactic toolkit, extra blood work that needs to be done, or maybe an EpiPen is, has to be given with the patient. Whatever the protocol is, try to follow it. Show the concern and you know try to catch all of these little things that are potential side effects. So all of this stuff happens in a visit and once the patient leaves, then you have to do your data entry on your EDC, your electronic data capture. So we will talk a little bit more about the softwares in the later section of this crash course. But essentially what you have to know right now is that after the visit, you have all of this information, right? You have them in these documents. And the documents where you are recording things like patient responses, or you're writing the vital signs, you're writing, okay, this is happening, drug has been given. That document is called a CRF, which is basically like a case report form. It can also be known as a source document. So sometimes in a job interview, you must be asked, well, what is a source document? And you'll say it is basically the first place where you are recording assessments or any kind of information about a patient during a visit, that first document, whether it's physical or electronic, that's a source document. That's the original source where the information is. Sometimes it might be in the you know form of a report. Sometimes it might be on the EMR system, wherever it is first recorded. And then you take it from the source and you enter a copy of it on the EDC, the electronic data capture. The difference is you own the source, your site has the source, whether it's electronic or print, but the EDC is owned by the pharma company. Now the pharma company is not allowed to know the full name of the patient or a lot of details about the patient, right? They're only allowed to take the data. 
about, okay, this was the vital sign of subject 10105. So in that case, you would take the relevant material from the source document and put it into the EDC for Botswana sponsors. Then what is the importance of a CRF or source document? It's because it's a way to verify. Sometimes during transferring information, this might be, in, you know, it might not match what your source is saying. Maybe you were copying it, you made a mistake, or maybe you are constantly making up variables. You're a very crappy um, trial coordinator and you're just making up stuff and sending it to the pharma sponsors and then they come on a tour and they're like, huh, where is your source? Oh, the source doesn't exist. So you never actually did the assessment. You were just making stuff up and putting it into a database. So the source document, the CRF is very important because it's the first original place the medical information was recorded and it's going to be used to be to verify everything um, at a later time for regulatory purposes but the edc is where it's all the identified data your patient's information is not provided but only specific data is provided in a very specific like software tool we'll get more into that later so this is typically how the picture of a study visit goes i hope this video has been helpful uh, we'll come again and meet in the next part you can watch the full crash course as well as individual parts i'm listing it all below this video and if you're liking the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up make a comment and let me know it's helping you